Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we're looking at this black beauty, although it's available in chrome finish as well. This is a Nikon F2. Specifically, it would be called a Nikon F2A Photomic. Um, this is an AI enabled version. Um, F2, iconic camera from early 70s, 72, 73, through to introduction of the F3, which came out in 1980, 81 time. So yeah, it's quite a heavy camera, very well built, obviously. It's a Nikon professional camera. Uh, this was the one that the uh, the paparazzi and everybody used in the, uh, in the 70s. Main advantage of the early, well, all of the F versions really is, is the removable prisms. A quick overview of the camera. Start at the front, self timer, which is even marked with graduations in the time, which is quite good. A bit of white paint missing out of there. Um, up here we have the uh, the stop down. I remove this. You can see that when I push this button, it would stop down the lens. That's your depth of field preview. And surrounding that, you've also got the mirror lock-up function as well. So you can take the mirror out of the way if you want to do long exposures and you don't want the... Or you think that the slapping of the mirror is going to cause vibrations in the camera. You can see the phones across the top there is not in particularly great condition. So that phone needs to be replaced. And this is the, uh, the lens locking and release button over here. Uh, PCI connector for flash, and obviously lugs for uh, hanging the strap from. On the side here, nothing much to see there. The back, we have a film back, camera back, and a memo holder. And again, nothing much on this side, a bit of brassing, which I think looks quite nice. On the bottom, we've got um, a way of opening the back. We have a battery, although the battery is only used for the metering. Um, it's a completely manual camera, manual shutter speed, and obviously manual aperture. Um, so the battery is only used to power the meter. If you happen to want to use a handheld meter, you don't need to worry about uh, this battery. Uh, tripod bush on the bottom. Um, rewind, push this in to rewind the film. And connections for the motor drive. This camera had a motor drive attachment that could um, power it up to 5 frames per second. That was pretty much the limit for most of these cameras, things like the Olympus OM series. They ran at 5 frames a second, uh, or Canons, etc. 5 frames a second was fast. Uh, obviously a 36 exposure film, it doesn't last very long. On the top dial, we have the uh, film advance and shutter cocking. Also we have the on-off switch, when you pull this out that powers up the meter. We have the shutter release button. This is set to 125th at the moment. Quite a loud camera. And then the speeds go all the way from B through to 2000th of a second. Not fast by today's standards, but uh, for the time it was pretty good. Oh, that's a lovely sound. Um, added odd way of doing the um, the cable release rather than the threaded cable release. Uh, and they can do a proprietary release that sort of fits around the collar. It's in the standard ones don't work. This um, is the lock. So the shutter button is locked when it's in that position. When it's in the middle position it fires and the T I think is the time position so uh, I think you use that in conjunction with the B or well, let me wind on when it's in the T position so I think that locks that side of it as well and then we just leave it in that position not sure what that does actually I have to look that up it's a bit of a failing in my uh, my knowledge of this camera I've used these for quite a few years and never really had any problems with them. But I will leave it in that position or in the locked position. Um, ASA dial, you just lift and uh, select your ASA. 
which is called ISO nowadays, but it's the same thing. And there's a few marks for one stop, two stop, under and over. And uh, the shutter speed dial is at the bottom. And you can read that. Viewfinder uh, doesn't have any way of blanking this off. Uh, again, the flash connections on Nikons are a bit strange. There's a shoe that fits over this uh, rewind part. You can see there's connections here. The flash ready light, etc. Usual pull up on there. Let's put the cap back on. Because this is an A version, um, it has an A marked on this uh, prism housing and it has the AI coupling rather than the fault coupling that goes into the rabbit ears on the pre-AI. A pre-AI version of this camera would be called a Nikon F2 uh, Photomic and this F2 was around at the time when the change was made so the body is exactly the same it all depends on the finder. So an F2A Photomic and an F2AS Photomic the only difference is the finders. Um, the S is the one that you can fit the aperture control unit on, which is a device that sits around the throat of the lens. has a big battery pack over this side, connects to the finder, and it selects the, uh, the corresponding aperture. So it gives you shutter priority, in effect. Uh, great thing about them also is it has a, a needle on the top, so you can look at the exposure up there. Uh, As the removable prism, here we can see the prisms. This is the DP11. I think the DP1 is the non A version, so it doesn't have the A and it has the coupling fork up here. And uh, the DP2 and the DP12, I think, are the S versions of these. You can see this is how it couples to it, knows what the shutter speed is that you selected. Quite nice. And obviously being a professional camera, you can also change the um, the focusing screens as well. This one isn't too bad, it's a bit dusty. But... Yep, there's a plain prism, there's a waist level finder, there's a magnifier finder, there's a variety of different finders that you can fit. So the cameras have instant return mirrors, so when you're taking the image, unlike medium format cameras, the mirror drops back down again. Right. The back on. Oh, I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't really see what I'm doing. Couple back to there. Now, when there's back on. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got lurking in the back of the compartment. Hopefully, no corrosion. Okay, we've got the cell in there, we'll look at it. We've got a couple of cells in there. Uh, it says 1.5 volt times 2, so I'm assuming this isn't the mercury cells of the other sort of cameras that we've been looking at recently. So this has got in it, I think these A76 alkaline cell. One tip with cameras is I know a lot of people say LR44s and SR44s are the same. They're not. Um, the SR44s have a lot more oomph to them than the LRs do. You'll find with LRs that you're actually replacing batteries far more frequently than you need to. SR batteries are more expensive, but uh, they do last a lot, lot, lot longer. Okay, so I'm going to see if the meter is working. So as we adjust the shutter speed, you can see that the needle clearly is moving. It's the usual sort of match needle system that you want it about there. So if I can find a lens that we can put on that one, try and find a lens that's appropriate to the camera. Uh, I really want an AI lens for that one. What have I got in the way of AI lenses that are standard-ish? Uh, that one would do. This is not a bad choice of lens for this camera. 
This is a 50mm E series lens, which is the sharpest of the 50mm lenses. It's a little pancake lens, but you can see it's uh, an AI lens. It has the AI coupling ring around it, so I'm going to pop this on. Um, Nikon's, you line the black dot up with the white dot. Turn it anti-clockwise to go the opposite way to Canon's. And then you can see that as I move to change the aperture, it's telling the camera what the head, uh, what the aperture is. I'm going to set to a thousandth. So I'll set that to 500 using the Sony 16 rule, which shouldn't be far off. There we go. So you can see as I change the aperture, it's uh, giving me a meter indication on the top there, so I don't need to put the camera up to my eye to meter. And when I look through the camera, I can see the needle in the viewfinder. I also can see uh, the selected shutter speed. And from the top of the lens, I can also see the selected aperture. Again, it reads the aperture through a little window up here. That's why you have these two sets of digits on the, uh, on the lens. You can see on the lens that there's a little... A little display on the back, and that's the one that gets read into the uh, into the metering head. So it displays both the shutter speed and the aperture. Right, meter's working. So let's put some film in there. So to open the back, let's turn this, and the back pops. And there we can see in the back we've got the, uh, the pressure plate here. Uh, Nikons of this age are quite good. They don't really rely too much on foam for light proofing. They're, they're quite well designed. You can see the shutter here. Wind it on. It's a double horizontally travelling. This appears to be rubbered up, rubbered, rubberized cloth shutter. And you can see the shutter firing. So let's stick some film in it. Another roll of uh, this film that I want to get used up, this is Fuji Color 200. So again, this will lift up to allow us to slot our cassette in. And we wind that down, as you know, to make sure and to check that we are actually winding the film through the camera. I always like to rewind it to take out the tension. So as the film is moving through the camera, the rewind lever is moving. And on this side, you can see that there are slots built into the uh, the take-up spool. So you feed the leader into the take-up spool, making sure it's in line with the sprocket. And round it goes. It's got a grip on it. It's in line with the sprocket. So once that's done, we can close the back. Backs don't lock automatically. <laughs> hmm. There we go, it's a bit stiff. Turn that round and put that down for the safety sake. That can be folded down now. Uh, automatic resetting counter, so I'm just wind this on. Usually, I've got most of them, it's three, and then you're ready to take the first exposure. This film is a 200, so we need to set this to 200. Because it's a 200, I'll set the shutter speed to a 250th for the starting point. I'm not going to put the black tape on this camera because I'm fairly confident that it's light tight. Um, it's one I have used quite regularly. And there we go. Uh, need to find a lens hood because you should always really have a lens hood and this lens could do with a bit of a clean but there you go it's how to load a Nikon F2 a Photomic might even be an FTN I'm not sure but I don't think I think they dropped the FTN by that time um, so yeah there you go I think this bit up here is a battery check actually if I remember right I'm not really, yeah it is a battery check 
Yeah. I'll say there should be somewhere checking the battery and if you push on this little button here, you can see that it comes up onto the scale. No illumination on these ones that came in on the F3s. But yeah, lovely camera. Totally mechanical. Don't need batteries if you're not going to use the light meter. So if you're going to use Sunny 16 or uh, use a handheld light meter, then uh, don't need any batteries in it. And to one and a half volts, that's not the mercury batteries. So really practical camera to use. Um, even autofocus lenses, as long as they're the AF nickels or the AFDs like this one. As you can see, it's got the AI coupling on it. This is an AF lens, 50mm 1.8D. Quite a nice lens, actually. Um, so that would work on this camera as well. Although, obviously, there's no autofocus, but you can focus it manually. That works fine. But for starting off, I'm going to be using this 50mm E-series lens. Right, there you go. Nikon F2 Photomic. F2A photonic even, sorry, getting it wrong. F2A photonic. Had to load it with film. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.